this is the management of lap, lapo atrophy. A lot of people think these are my legs, and these are not my picture of my legs. But um, we also have the facial wasting. So, yeah, I have sexy legs now. I'm just telling y'all. Um, so we can, one of the two culprits that are actually associated with this are Xeret and Retrovir. One of the things you can do is actually DC those drugs. You can also switch to Viriad and Zygen. That's a possibility if that's allowed. Check with your physicians to make sure that you check to make sure that's a possibility. You also can do an injection called Sculptra. Did I say that right, Manish? Sculptra. And uh, it actually fills in the cheeks a little bit. So now is this a major thing? Yeah. So I know a lot of patients who have major problems with this because it looks like you have HIV. So you really want to help patients when they um, are starting to develop something like this. You get with, with a physician and anything to make sure that you're always talking about. Get to your physician, keep your appointments, and keep your labs before any of this hopefully potentially is something that would cause adherence problems. Okay, Zygen hypersensitivity reaction. Now this is always one that I get a lot of questions on, so I'm going to go over it slow and easy so everybody gets it. So Zygen, and also known as Abacavir, can have a hypersensitive reaction. If you'll notice, if you've ever, ever seen Zygen, it's always in a box. Has everyone ever noticed that, that it's in a box? Can anyone name me some other drug combinations that have Zygen in it? I know this table over here better say it. Trisavir, it comes in a box, doesn't it? Epsicom, it comes in a box. Why would they come in a box? Can you tell me? There's a warning card about the hypersensitive reaction. And that warning card every box. So when you're dispensing the drug and giving it to a patient, make sure that they have what's great about it is what's great about it is um, we actually can test this hypersensitivity reaction now. So you'll have eight, the test is called HLA dash B five seven oh one. So we can actually screen for that now and that was really great. But when the drug first came out there wasn't a test. However case the doctor forgot to test for it, you need to be familiar with it. So let me explain how symptoms will present. So am I doing this right? Okay, so we have fever, rash, constitutional symptoms, respiratory symptoms, and GI symptoms. You're going to have two or more of those symptoms, and with each dose, the side effects are going to get progressively worse. You got to have two of them at least. And with each dose, it gets worse and worse and worse. Because what does symptoms look like to you? What does it sound like? It's something very similar that's not even a drug. The flu. The flu, doesn't it? If I told you the symptoms of the flu, it could be the same thing, right? And with the swine flu going around this winter, that was majorly important. So make sure that you coordinate if you think this is a hypersensitive reaction, you coordinate with the physician and providers. Here's the reason why that's majorly important. It usually starts within the first six months. can start later, but that's usually when it happens, okay? Also, what happens is this. You try the drug, and you say, okay, you're getting some of these symptoms. Let's stop it, and let's try it again later. That's called re-challenging it. That drug cannot, Zygen, cannot be re-challenged. The reason is it drops a patient's blood pressure so bad if they're having a hypersensitive reaction, if that's what the problem was, that the emergency room will never get that high blood pressure back up, that low blood pressure back up. It's not going to revive the patient. It's called death. All right? So it has happened. So make sure you know what you're doing. If a patient calls you, you've got to know how to handle it. First thing you do is coordinate with the provider and the physician. Okay? Because if, they, if it's a Friday night and you say, stop taking the drug, and they actually were getting the flu, then the doctor will never try that drug again. You've lost it. You can never rechallenge. All right. So does that? Did I get that clear? Does everybody understand that one? Any questions on it? Okay. So um, Viriad. This one's yours, Vanish. Yeah. So Viriad. Viriad is generally a well-tolerated drug. It. The only two things that people screen for routinely would be renal insufficiency. So it does have something called Fanconi syndrome associated with this medication. And it's not something that the patients are going to complain to you if they have kidney failure. I mean, unless it's really end stage. Um, but when the patients come to you, their, their provider to get their blood work and their urine test done, this is something that will be screened for. 
And then the second thing we want to mention with this meds is that it may affect your bone mineral density. So it's something that, you know, as HIV patients are living longer, their age is getting, they're getting older, age in itself can cause their bones to become a little bit more brittle. So there's a few things you can tell your patients to do regardless. So exercise, reduce alcohol if they drink, reducing smoking if they do smoke a lot, calcium and vitamin supplements, you're going to see a lot of that in the internet and on the internet as well as more providers are talking about more vitamin D supplements. And then certainly if the patient has osteoporosis, their providers might choose to use a, uh, a class of drugs known as bisphosphonates. An example would be Fosamax or Actinol. You might have heard of those products. Now this is my favorite slide. You know, does anyone have an idea why this is my favorite slide? Anybody got a clue? It's real easy. So, Emtriva and Epivir are very well tolerated drugs when it comes to side effect management. They're my favorite because I don't have to worry about those too much. However, Emtriva can have a potential hyperpigmentation of the skin. It looks like little dots on your hands. I've never seen it, but it could happen. But they're usually very, very well tolerated. Now, Manish, why are you talking about hepatitis B and an active side effect class? That's a great question, Allison. So, hepatitis B, we know that we also can use some of our HIV drugs to treat hepatitis B, and three specifically, so Viriad, Amtriva, and Apivir. Now, the problem is not that the drugs are having problem. The problem is that if patients are, have hepatitis B and using one of these three drugs, yet you have to stop one of these three drugs. Upon stopping, you can see an acute exacerbation of their hepatitis B, so a flare in their hep. And then that's, again, that's something you want to be aware of, let the patient know or, or, the, or the physician if he wasn't aware of it in case that comes, a, comes out to be an issue. Okay, we're on to our second class of drug called the NNRTIs, the non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors. So the, we have four of them. There are Sestiva, Viramune, Rescriptor, and Intellens. Once again, we point out that this is a multi-class drug called a tripla. It actually has two classes and three drugs. So it's three drugs, two different classes, okay? So let's talk about viramune. Viramune, one of the things that when people first see viramune, they may, and they'll think about anti uh, side effects, they're gonna think about rash. That usually is the first thing that people come up with. It can be very mild and moderate, or it can develop into something called the Stevens Johnson's rash. Now we gave you a picture of this, this is kind of rough, but a uh, Stevens Johnson rash is over here to the right side of your screen. It's almost like a burn. So this is real important that you stress that you don't want to scare the patient, but you do want to stress that they need to keep in touch with their doctor, make sure they're keeping their labs and appointments. This is where you come in handy to let them know that if something develops, contact you so that you're there to help them manage through it. Now, if it's mild, you may be able to work through it. If it get, you definitely want to stop it if it gets to something like a Steven Johnson. Now, one of the ways that we help reduce this risk is we actually have, Viramune has what they call a lead-in dose or a loading dose. So what they do is they take one tablet every day for 14 days. Then, after the 14 day on day 15, they'll go to one tablet twice a day thereafter. So I call it in simple English, it gives the body time to get used to it. So that's the way I do it. Now if you're having this, remember like I said, if you're having increase in ALTs uh, or anything like that, then you need to make sure that the doctor is monitoring that. And that's where you stress. Make sure you keep with your doctor on all drugs, not just viramine itself. Is there anything else I need to mention? Now, there's one other. There is one possibility where if patients are having a mild rash without these other constitutional symptoms like fever or feeling sick, or having liver enzymes go up, then in that scenario, you may actually extend that dosing, that once a day dosing from 14 days all the way up to 28 days but not beyond that and hopefully that will help subside this reaction and the patient will be able to continue the medication um, after those 28 days and at that point if they're feeling fine then we'll start going up to the twice a day uh, regular dose.